A very good morning to you. You're welcome to the breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Brume Paulson. It's Monday, the, well, the 5th of February 2024, and I'm sure you've had a great weekend, I want to believe, and you're pumped up for the week that is to come. Anyways, we're going to be having some hot topics, looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning, as well as some trending stories making headlines across Nigeria. But first, let's look at our quote of the day to set the tone this morning. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. And the realist adjusts the sails. And this is coming from William Arthur Wood. He's an American, well, he's late now, but he's an American motivational writer. And he says, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. And the realist just adjust the sales and that is our quote of the day it's mindset monday so this is to change your mindset are you a pessimist are you an optimist or are you a realist stop complaining about the wind if you're a pessimist start to be optimistic about life think about how um, you can expect it to change because as as we all know time the wind blows so if you feel like the wind is not blowing in your direction right now, just be hopeful that it is going to blow into your direction really soon. And so you can be an, an optimist, but you can also be a realist and try to adjust it wherever you think, you know, you need adjustment in your life. It could be self-development. Um, you start to take um, those chances. You start to make those necessary adjustments to your life and take the opportunities as they come. And that is it for our quote of the day. We're going to move over to some um, top trending stories that have been uh, making headlines in the country. And the first one says EFCC recovers over 30 billion naira from humanitarian ministry looted funds. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has recovered over 30 billion naira from the, well, 37, 170, um, 855,000 seven hundred and fifty three point forty four naira allegedly laundered in the ministry of humanitarian affairs under the former minister sadia umar farouk the commission had also reportedly uncovered over 500 million naira from the scam associated with umar farouk's successor beta edu who was recently suspended by president bola tinubu in December, 37,170,855,773.44 had been transferred from government coffers and sent to 38 different bank accounts domiciled in five legacy commercial banks belonging to or connected with the contractor, James Okwete. It was gathered on Friday that 30 billion naira was recovered from the EFCC by the EFCC following the placement of a lien on the bank accounts of Umar Farouk and Okwete, who are still being grilled by the anti grafts agency's investigators. The commission is also still grilling Edu in connection with an alleged 17 billion naira fraud, while the suspended coordinator of the National Social Investment Program, Halima Shehu, is also still being questioned over an alleged 44 billion naira fraud. In another development, the EFCC said it recovered a total of 70 556, 658, 7, 370 point five between October 2023 and January 19, 2024. Details of the recovery were outlined in an EFCC document titled Operations and Recoveries, which is exclusively obtained by our correspondent. The document revealed that in the period under review, the EFCC recovered over 60 million, well, 60 billion, 969 million, 047, um, 1634.25, um, about 10, 
million dollars, 150,000 um, pounds, and 4,119.90 euros, also making it about over 70 billion. It added that the EFCC received a total of 3,325 petitions accepted. 2,657 of the petitions and secured the conviction of 747 persons for financial crimes ranging from the money laundering to internet fraud in the same period. A breakdown of the data shows that the EFCC headquarters alone recovered over 4,907, 391, 330.44 um, million billion naira. 3,900, 3,900,200.75 million dollars and 2,000 pounds, as well as 110 pounds. Within the same period, the agency said it secured the conviction of 747 persons for offenses ranging from money laundries to cyber crimes. However, the chairman of the EFCC, Ola Olukoyede, at a dialogue in Abuja on Wednesday revealed that most of the 747 convictions also involved persons who were prosecuted for cybercrime offenses. Meanwhile, the commission said that it has deepened its probe into money laundering cases involving some high-profile public officials, especially former governors and ministers indicted for fraud. The total amount involved in the money laundering cases rose to around 130.1 billion naira as of January 31, 2024. Details of the development were contained in an EFCC document titled 100 Days in Office, detailing ongoing probes, discoveries, and recoveries made by the Commission under Olu Koyede. Now, I know this is a lot, <laughs> this is a lot of numbers to wrap our, our head around, but why are we still talking about money laundering in this DNA, especially with the, with the deepening economy that we have? Um, we're seeing women um, such as Sadia, such as Beta Edu, um, commit all of these things, and it shouldn't be so. It shouldn't be in any way, because, I, I mean, if I think about the likes of Deziani, it, there's, there's just that thing, and because I am a woman, so there's that thing that... You know, women go in there and we make a mess of these things. We make a mess of the opportunity. We've always said that we want women to sit at the table. Now we're being seated at the table and we're making a mess of it. Please, um, we should dis just try as much as possible when you get into office. Make sure that you are doing the job that you're called for. You're not stealing. You're not laundering money. You're not doing anything that is illegal. And aside being illegal, you should do your job. I mean, we're seeing women who have gone into offices, who have, you know, held positions and they're, permit me to use the word, killing it. They're, they're doing their job in the best way that they can. We have likes of Obi Ezekwesili. We have likes of um, even Chimamanda Adichie. We have likes of Lady Dora Kunili. We have likes of Stella Amadevo. You know, I can go on and on for the women that are, you know, really, really doing their jobs honing their skills and making Nigeria proud. And I think if we're saying that we want women seated on the table, we should go there and do what we're supposed to do and just make sure that, you know, everyone is proud of us and say, yes, we gave women the opportunity. They're taking it, riding with it, and they're making us proud. All right, that's it for that story. Let's move over to another one. A driver killed as abducted a Kitipopil's teachers regain freedom. The pupils and teachers of the Apostolic Faith Montessori School in Emore Ekiti kidnapped on January 29 have regained their freedom. The school children were released earlier on Sunday. However, the driver who was also among the abductors was killed and burnt by the assailants. A senior police officer also confirmed the release of the victims. And while the abductors had demanded 10 million naira each before releasing 10 victims, he was silent on whether any ransom was paid. When asked about the driver, the officer said his charred remains were covered in the bush. The Ekiti state government has also confirmed the release of the victims. The special advisor on media to the governor, Olayika Oyebode, said the pupils and their teachers were released on February 4 and brought to the Elemore Palace around 4 a.m. Describing their releases as timely, the Ikiti state governor, Biodun Oyebanji, thanks President Bolotinubu for his support that led to the rescue of the victims. 
the governor also restated the determination of his administration to stamp out crime and criminal criminality from the state by making the environment unbearable for criminals op operating under whatever guise. He stated that the killers of the two AKT traditional rulers will be fished out and made to face the maximum weight of the law, urging people of the state to remain vigilant and report any suspicious movement in their communities to the authorities. Um, regarding the story, I mean, we're, we're happy and we're glad that the, the, the pupils, the students, the school children have been released. However, our heart goes to the driver who was killed. Um, it's quite sad and it's it's funny how this comes up almost every single time in our news um, week in week out we're talking about kidnapping we're talking about killings um, this is this is quite sad and you know we just hope that things start to look better for in terms of security especially because you know security is a huge part for our lives that only it's only when you're secure that you know you can live a good fulfilled life and so we're just hoping that you know the the, the necessary authority starts to ramp up all the things that they need to be able to secure the lives and properties of Nigerians. And so our heart goes to the families of the driver that was killed. Um, and we're also happy that, you know, these school children have been released. And we're hoping that, you know, this incident doesn't happen again, because like I said, it's, it happens week in, week out. But we're looking for a place where Nigeria will be safe for every single one of us. All right, and to our final top training story, INEX suspends electoral officer in plateau over missing ballot papers. The Independent and National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended the electoral officer for just not local government area, Mr. Fred Ogboji, over missing ballot papers in Saturday's rerun election. This is contained in a statement, Mr. Isa Idako, the state head of Department of Electoral Operations, on behalf of the resident electoral commissioner, REC, on Sunday in Joss. He directed the electoral officer to step aside and give room for a proper investigation. The news agency of Nigeria NAN reports that INEC on Saturday rescheduled election in 16 polling units of just not Basa federal constituency following the discovery that some ballot papers were missing. Dr. Oliver Agundu, the state INEC rec, said in a statement that the election had been rescheduled for Sunday, February 4, and Agundu said that voting would commence at 9.30 a.m. and end at 3.30 p.m. The REC stated that the commissioner discovered at the eve of the rerun that the ballot papers for 16 polling units in just North Basa federal constituency had gone missing. It said that the matter had been referred to the security agencies for investigation. And yes, that's the way to go. Um, I love the fact that they are suspending. So if we hear things like this, we need to swing into action. We need to investigate, suspend who needs to be suspended and just investigate more on the matters because we cannot be saying we, we are in a country that, you know, we, we, do, we do free and fair election and sometimes you're hearing cases like this where ballot papers are missing. We're hearing cases where people are being bullied. We're hearing cases where, you know, thugs come in and at the end of the day, you cannot even vote in a secured environment or you're not even sure if your vote is going to count and your vote should count so i'm happy to hear things like this we're happy here um to to just get get the wind of of, of such things that whenever you break the law because missing ballot papers if you are the the electoral officer and the ballot papers are missing that should raise an eyebrow so if they are missing, then we're asking you the questions. And if you cannot provide the questions, well, you have to be suspended till we investigate. Well, you provide the answers or we investigate more into the matter. And so, yes, we're hoping that this is a new Nigeria that we've been looking at. We've been looking for where our vote counts and we can have a free and fair election. All right, that is it for our top trending stories this morning. We'll take a short break where we look at the weather. And when we return, we're looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. Stay with us.